Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I uh, got started on this. I think most of the time when uh, we wake up, we need a wake-up call. And I was in uh, Palm Springs, California. I was in a triathlon. Hmm. I was on a biking portion of the race, and uh, I was making a turn, and I was passing two cyclists on the corner. And uh, there was a cadet, a police officer, kind of pointing at me, waving on to make the turn, like this. Okay. And he had his back to the oncoming traffic. So when I made the turn, a four-wheel drive Bronco going about 55 miles an hour uh, caught me from behind and catapulted me out of my bike. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, when you land that hard on your rump uh, or on your back, uh, the force of that compression takes the columns of the vertebrae and compresses them. So I had uh, broken six vertebrae in oh my, my spine. Goodness. And I had bone fragments on my spinal cord. And the very top segment, the eighth thoracic vertebrae, we, I broke T, uh, T8, T9, T10, T11, T12, and L1. And T8 took the compressive force, and I flexed. And so when I flexed, it compressed that vertebrae more than 60%. And the arch, where the uh, spinal cord passes through, broke like a pretzel. So I had uh, multiple compression fractures oh my of God. my thoracic spine. I had a bone fragments on my cord, because when you compress a volume of something, the volume has to go somewhere. So it went back on the cord. And the neural arch of the eighth thoracic vertebrae was, uh, was compressing the cord as well. Oh my goodness. So anyway, um, a typical procedure for something like that is uh, called the Harrington rod surgery. And they cut off the back parts of your vertebrae. It's called a laminectomy. In my case, it would be from the base of my neck to the base of my spine. Got chills. And uh, then they screw in these stainless steel rods. And the action of screwing into the, the bone causes a cantilever. It kind of pulls the column off the cord in some cases oh and opens up the, the nerve supply. Uh, and then they take bone fragments from your hip and they, they paste it over the top and they mm. hope for the best. And so I had four opinions uh, from four of the leading surgeons in Southern California and it was unanimous that, uh, that I needed that procedure. Now, I was on a lot of pain. I had some neurological problems. And they told me if I didn't have the surgery, I would never walk again. Uh, so I decided against the surgery. Mm. And I thought I didn't want to live uh, handicapped. Mm. I didn't want to be in a wheelchair. And I didn't want to be addicted mm. uh, to pain medication. So I thought well, I might as well take a chance here. So I didn't really know what I was doing I was at say, the, the time. say the chance on what? Did you yeah. know what the alternative was? Well, I think, I think that I believed that this voice kept coming up in mm. my head saying, the power that made the body heals the body. Mm. And, and I thought, well, God, this power is an intelligence. And intelligence is consciousness. Consciousness is awareness. Awareness is paying attention. It must be paying attention to me. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Did you think this way prior to that incident? Yeah, to some degree. I think, I think that most of us are philosophical to some degree. You mm -hmm. know, we have a philosophy about life. So do I. Mm -hmm. But when you're initiated, <laughs> that means yes. you have to initiate that philosophy. So Love that. I had to take what I knew mm -hmm. and weigh it against what I didn't know. And I think one of the worst places we, are, we wind up as human beings is indecision. Mm -hmm. And so I had very, very strong authorities telling me, yeah. you're never going to walk again. You're gonna, you have a head injury. I don't know why you're deciding mm -hmm. against the surgery. If it was my son, it would be on the operating table. Anyway, I checked out of the hospital, and I began the process. I wasn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing anything. Uh, I was laying face down, and I said, I'm not going to let any thought slip by my awareness that I don't want to experience. And mm -hmm. if this intelligence is truly a consciousness, I have to be present with it. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I just start, started reconstructing my spine and my mind, vertebrae by vertebrae. And then, you know, you'd start, I'd start off doing that, and the next thing you know, I'd start thinking about, should I sell my home, should I sell my practice? Mm -hmm. And I realized that the template, the design that I wasn't, was mm -hmm. creating wasn't complete. So I'd stop, start all over again, okay. get frustrated, then it would get harder. And that it sounds was, like me when I began meditating. Yes, yeah, the frankly. same thing, yeah. yeah. Because meditation requires being present, and that's mm -hmm. a skill. Mm -hmm. You've got to practice it. So um, I didn't have a teacher at the time. I was just going off my intuition. And it would take me three hours to go through the whole entire process just to complete it. And I'd start all over because Incredible. I wanted it to be a, a complete uh, model. So six and a half weeks of just a dark night of the soul. 
because I think when we're traumatized or we're under stress, we tend to focus on what we don't want to have happen and right. what we do want to have happen. And I think in survival, we're always preparing for the worst case scenario. Hmm. So it was, a, it was a battle that I couldn't get my mind to do what I wanted to do. At the end of six and a half weeks, one day, I went through the whole entire thing without breaking my focus, and I swear it was like hitting a golf ball right in the sweet spot. It just, it just clicked, and mm -hmm. I clicked. And from that moment on, my body started to heal. That's I, incredible. I started to have less pain. My neurological symptoms were, were diminishing. And the moment I started to correlate the changes that were happening in my body with what I was doing inside of me, mm. I started doing it with more passion and more enthusiasm. Anyway, I was back on my feet in uh, nine and a half weeks. I was back training again at uh, 12 weeks. Come on. I was back in my practice. and. Um, you know, they told me that I would have to wear this body cast for a year, six months to a year. And, uh, well, gosh, I put it on once and took it off and said, there's just no way I'm going to wear this. And so I just made awesome. a deal with myself. And the deal was, uh, in those lonely nights where I couldn't sleep, if, uh, if I'm ever able to walk again, I'll spend the rest of my life studying the mind-body connection and mind over matter. And pretty much that's what I've been doing. I, I, I teach people really a way to live a better life and to, to heal themselves of mm -hmm. past scars, to mm -hmm. provide the tools for them to realize that they're more than they really uh, perceive themselves to be. And, and I believe that your personality creates your personal reality. Mm -hmm. and Can you elaborate on that? I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, so your personality is made up of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. Mm -hmm. So the present personality who's watching this show has created the present personal reality called their life. God, means that. then if you want to change your life, your personal reality, mm -hmm. that means fundamentally you have to change your personality. Mm -hmm. That means you have to start thinking about what you've been thinking about and change it. You have to begin to become aware of your unconscious habits and behaviors and modify them. Mm -hmm. And then you have to look at certain emotions that keep you anchored to the past Mm. and decide if those emotions belong in your future. Mm. And I think after all these years, Ed, I think that most people try to create a new personal reality as the same personality wow. and it doesn't work. You know, you literally have to become someone else. Mm. So the process then, most people, they're thinking the same thoughts, they're making the same choices, mm -hmm. they're demonstrating the same behaviors, they're creating the same experiences that stamp the same networks of neurons into the same patterns, all for the familiar feeling that they call themselves. And if you keep doing that over and over again, there's a principle in neuroscience that says that nerve cells that fire together wire together. Mm -hmm. So people begin to hardwire their brain into very finite signature, into these automatic programs. Mm -hmm. Turns out by the time we're 35 years old, we become a set of memorized behaviors, emotional reactions, beliefs, perceptions, unconscious attitudes that function just like a computer program. So mm -hmm. when people want to change, they're using 5% of their conscious mind and they mm -hmm. can think positively all they want, mm -hmm. but the programs are running subconsciously telling yeah. them that they're negative. So, so the only way to do that then is to get into the operating system. And getting into the operating system of, of that, the, where those programs exist requires then people beginning to go do some inward work. Mm -hmm. If you sit down and you disconnect from your outer world, you close your eyes, we play some music in the background, you sit your body down mm -hmm. and not smelling anything or tasting anything or mm -hmm. experiencing anything or feeling anything, and you're not thinking about or anticipating the future or remembering the familiar past, that moment, that elegant moment where you fall into the present moment is where the magic happens. Mm. And so after looking at enough brain scans in the process of studying the uh, transformation, yeah, I call that getting beyond yourself because yep. when you disconnect from your present personal reality mm -hmm. and personality, now you're ready to create something else. And okay. so what thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate? And the act of rehearsing the behavior mm -hmm. uh, begins to install the neurological hardware in your brain, okay. primes it to look like the experience has already yes. happened. Yep. Um, your brain is organized to reflect everything you know in your life. Your brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact mm -hmm. of everything you've learned and experienced at this mo uh, moment. If feelings and emotions are the end product of past experiences, and we can remember experiences better because we remember how they feel. Yeah. So most people wake up in the morning and they start remembering all their problems. Mm -hmm. And those problems are connected to certain people and certain things at certain times and places. The moment they start thinking about those problems, they're thinking in the past. 
those problems have an emotion associated with them. Mm. And the moment they start feeling those emotions, the body is the unconscious mind, doesn't know the difference between an experience that's creating an emotion and the emotion the person's fabricating by thought alone. Now, thoughts are the language of the brain mm. and feelings are the language of the body. And how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. Mm -hmm. So most people's entire state of being, mm -hmm. when they start their day, is already in the past. Mm -hmm. So you have a choice. The choice is you're either defined by a vision of the future mm -hmm. or you're defined by the memories of the past. Mm -hmm. And when you decide to say, okay, I'm going to change, and you decide one thing, I'm not going to eat this food, I'm going to wake up earlier, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to do something aerobic, I'm not going to have mm -hmm. sugar after 6 o'clock, whatever it is, yep. the person, whatever choice a person makes, the moment you make a choice to do something differently, and the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before, mm -hmm. get ready, because it's going to feel uncomfortable. Right. It's going to feel unfamiliar. There's going to be some uncertainty and unpredictability, and that's the moment the game is on. Yes. So then most people, their, their body has been conditioned emotionally to be the mind. Yeah. So now the, so the, the body says, wow, uh, I'd rather hang on to my guilt mm -hmm. than take a chance in possibility. I'd rather live in fear yes. than trust in the unknown. So, yep. so once the person feels uncomfortable, the body goes, whoa, wait a second. Uh, we're out of the program here, mm -hmm. and body starts influencing the mind. That's right. So it says, start tomorrow, you'll never change, right. you don't have the money to do this, you're not good enough, your mother told you you were this, your yeah. father's fault, it's your ex's fault, mm -hmm. you know, all of the voices that mm -hmm. come up. Now here's the deal, if you respond to those voices, those same thoughts as if they're true, by the way, they're always going on behind right. the scenes of your awareness, but right. now they're amplified because you're outside your comfort yeah. zone. You believe in that thought, that thought's gonna lead to the same choice, which is gonna lead to the same behavior, which mm. is gonna create the same experience and produce the same emotion. Mm. And the person's gonna say, this feels right. Yes. No, 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 that feels familiar. Going from the old self to the new self is a neurological, it's a biological, it's a chemical, it's a hormonal, it's a genetic death of the old self. Mm -hmm. And people will say to me, in that void, in that unknown, mm -hmm. I can't predict my future. And I'll say to them, the best way to predict your future is to create it. I love Not it. from the known, but from the unknown. I love it. So close your eyes now and think about that vision. Mm. Once you start thinking about that vision of your future, you're activating the creative centers in your brain. Mm -hmm. And naturally, mm -hmm. you begin to think about putting yourself in the scene. Yes. And the act of doing that, when you're truly passionate and truly present, the moment you're defined by that vision, when the thought in your mind becomes the experience, mm -hmm. you begin to feel the emotion of the event before it's made manifest. Yes. Now, you're giving your body mm -hmm. a sampling, a taste I of the it. future. And now, if a thought and a feeling create a new state of being, you're combining a clear intention with an elevated emotion, mm -hmm. and now you're beginning to change your biology, and you're seeing a whole new landscape that you could never see before, because you're no longer viewing your future through the lens of the past. I love this. Now, this, this requires, then, something really specific, because most people will wait for their, their, uh, their wealth to feel abundance. They'll right. wait for their success to feel empowered. They'll wait for their new relationship yep. to feel love. They'll, They'll get all these things when. Yes, right. so, so, so think about that. The absence of getting those things causes people to live in lack their entire life. That's right. And so they're waiting for something outside of them to change how they feel inside, inside of them. them. And if they're not creating a new life, mm -hmm. then they're not pr applying the proper principles, then they keep all their manifestations, all their dreams at, at arm's length. Mm -hmm. Think about this, if yeah. you get up feeling gratitude, if you yeah. get up feeling empowered, if you yeah. get up feeling whole, if you get up feeling unlimited, mm -hmm. why, yeah. would you, why would you worry about whether it was gonna come or not? You would feel like it already happened. Right. Okay. We're wired. Right. to create. This okay. isn't something that you have to try to do. Right. You just have to get beyond the memory of your past right. and all the associations to create a new future. Now, theoretically, that sounds, sounds really easily, but everybody's done it at least once That's in right. their life. What That's happened? Right. You get a wild idea. Yep. You get a crazy idea and you think, what would it be like to be happy? What mm -hmm. would it be like to be in love? What would it be like to be rich? What, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Yes. And you, all of a sudden, you ask that question mm -hmm. and you turn on the creative center in your brain. That's right. It turns on. Yes. And then now the frontal lobe is, is, the, 
is the boss, it's the mm -hmm. CEO, it's the symphony leader. And the frontal lobe, as an executive, has connections to all other parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. Now, when you ask that question, it's got to answer it. So it's got to look out over the landscape and see what kind of raw materials do I have? Mm -hmm. Well, you only have a few things, knowledge you've learned and experiences you've had. So it begins to call up different networks of neurons and it begins to seamlessly piece them together and you get a vision in your mind that's called intent. Mm -hmm. And if you're passionate, mm -hmm. you start to feel the feelings of when it happens. Mm -hmm. Now, you're giving your body that energetic boost. Mm -hmm. Now, Everybody's done this. The moment you've said that, no one can talk you out of it. No person, That's right. no thing, no experience. It's you're possessed by it. Mm -hmm. So then what happens next? You start writing down yeah. all the choices you need to make. Okay. All the things you gotta do. Okay. All the goals and experiences you want in your future. And every mm -hmm. time you write one of those goals or experiences mm -hmm. down, you start to feel more of those emotions. And now mm -hmm you're basically assembling mm -hmm. more of your future. Now, the astute person does something really amazing. They start learning more information. You wanna be wealthy? Mm -hmm. Study wealthy people. Mm -hmm. You wanna be healthy? Study healthy people. Mm -hmm. you, as you begin to gain more knowledge, you're adding more stitches into mm -hmm. the three-dimensional tapestry mm -hmm. and you got more raw materials mm -hmm. to dream in new ways. Now, here's the part that, that is the most important. Mm -hmm. Take out a piece of paper and say, what thoughts do I have to stop thinking? You know, I can't, I'll start tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'm too hard, I don't feel like it, I have a mm -hmm. headache, mm -hmm. I gotta go to sleep, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. List those thoughts yep. and become so conscious yes. of those thoughts that you would never let one of those thoughts slip by your awareness unchecked by you. Can I say something about that? Yeah. I wanna jump in on that. One of the powers of writing those thoughts down is you completely eliminate and weaken their influence over you. They become minimized when you write them. They lose their power over you when you grab control of them by writing them down. It's a significantly powerful exercise is to write down those thoughts. Yeah, from a neuroscientific standpoint, what's called metacognition, because the moment you can observe the thought yeah. and become conscious of it, you're no longer the program. Your consciousness observing the program and you begin to literally objectify your subjective self and now you're pulling out. So then wh write down the choices you have to stop making. Mm -hmm. Look at the things you mm -hmm. have to stop doing. Do you complain? Do you mm -hmm. make excuses? Do you blame other people? Mm -hmm. What do you do? List those things and be really honest with yourself. What experiences do you have to stay away from from certain people at certain times? Mm -hmm. and place? Stay away from them mm -hmm. so that you are not in the environment that mm -hmm. triggers it. And now here's the most important point. Okay. Write down those emotions that keep you yeah. anchored to the past because those emotions are literally residue from the past chemically. So then the moment you start feeling suffering, the moment you start feeling guilt, the moment you start feeling unworthy, the moment you start feeling despair, or the moment you start feeling any of those emotions, you're back in your past. Yes. And you can't see the future. Mm -hmm. you're, 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 you're thinking within those emotional mm -hmm. states. And we've looked at enough brain stands to say that when you think within a certain emotion, you're gonna make your brain worse. Our thoughts are physical. Mm -hmm. What are thoughts when they happen in your body? The power of this is great. The stronger the emotion that you feel mm -hmm. from any condition in your environment, the more you pay attention to the cause. So the higher the threshold of the emotion, the more the brain narrows its focus on whatever it is in the environment that does it. And the brain takes a snapshot, and that's called a memory. Okay. So now people think neurologically within the circuits of the past experience mm -hmm. and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions. Mm -hmm. Now you say to the person, well, what happened? Mm -hmm. The person say, this person did this to me, that person did that, then this happened. And the latest research on memory says that 50% of what you talk about in the past isn't even the truth. Wow. That you, you, you don't have the same brain then. Mm -hmm. So you make stuff up, which means now you're reliving a past that you didn't even have just to embellish it, to produce the emotions, Emotion. to reaffirm your limited, limited state. This is a time in history where it's not enough to know. I think this is a time in history to know how, right? And so um, we teach these workshops all over the world. I just came from Sardinia. We had a beautiful event with a lot of people there and boy, we saw some pretty amazing. Well, when we live addicted to the hormones of stress, mm -hmm. and stress is when your brain and body are out of homeostasis. Stress is when you're out of balance. Mm -hmm. The stress response is what your body innately does to return itself back to order. Mm -hmm. So you're driving down the road and someone cuts you off, you jam on the brake, you almost hit them, you get that rush of adrenaline, you're aroused, you're awakened from that experience. Uh, there's a rush of chemistry that takes place and you're in emergency mode. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you you may get angry, you may say a few things, but you know, most people just get back on and they yeah. and, the, and the body returns back to balance. You know, you may talk about it to a coworker yeah. here and there. 
So that's a, all organisms are designed for short-term stress, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, but what we as human beings do is something very different. We, when we, we, we react to something, uh, the rush of those chemicals become addictive. Now, we begin to use the problems and people in our lives mm. to reaffirm the addiction to those emotions. Mm. We need the bad job, the poor mm. career. Yes. The, I need to watch the news because it works us up yes. into that state. So we become like an addict yes. that needs the rush of those chemicals. Now, when the brain is in emergency, and it's living in the state, what happens naturally is we begin to pay attention to whatever the stressor is. Now, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. Mm -hmm. So the stronger the emotion you have to your ex or to your job or to the news, the more you're giving your power away to that person or thing. So good. So now, so as your stress is created from a lack of control, you can't predict the future, you can't control it, or you have the perception of something getting worse. Yep. So when those chemicals are beginning to become aroused, this is what happens. You start shifting your attention from one problem to one person, to one thing, to another place, to another problem. Now, each one of those elements you have a circuit in your brain for. Mm. So imagine looking at the brain mm. when you're doing that. You're, it's like a lightning storm, it's just going off. And if you were to measure brain waves when that happened, <laughs> happens. The brain is very incoherent. It's out of sync. And when the brain's incoherent, you're incoherent. At the same exact time, if you're sitting across the table from a coworker and you're smiling and you're thinking, God, I'd love to throttle him. <laughs> and, and you're arousing yourself in that state, don't you know that your heart is racing because it's perceiving a, a predator? Mm. So now as the heart starts to race, it becomes incoherent. Mm. And then when your heart becomes incoherent, you don't trust yourself. When your heart doesn't be, well, is no longer coherent, you no longer make choices that are going to be in your best interest, right? Mm -hmm. It's no longer the guidepost. So mm -hmm. then, is it possible then to train the brain to become more coherent? Is it possible to train the, the heart to become more mm -hmm. coherent? And we've done extensive studies. Mm -hmm. And I, you can't tell me you're too old for this. You can't tell me you're too sick for this. You can't tell me you're too out of shape too overweight, too underweight, you have a difficult past, you can't tell me that you haven't meditated before. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're so I run uh, wine tours uh, you do. all over the world. I'm okay. a, I'm a, I've, I've been drinking wine since I was five years old. My, my since you were five years old? Yeah, my grandfather was a okay. winemaker and uh, okay. spent a lot of time tasting a lot of wines. Okay. He, let, he'd sit me down and make me taste wine. So I love wine. Uh, I love to cook for groups yeah. of people. You do. I cook really well. Um, my bo I have two boys, uh, and they surf, and so I get out there with them you and surf do. a little bit. Uh, you love to laugh, too, because we're off camera. You were, every seven or eight minutes, you were laughing about something, so there's, there's that element, yeah, too, right? Um, I'm a pretty normal guy. Uh, I, I do like to take time for myself. I think yeah. that's really important. I think when you invest in yourself, you invest in a future. Mm. I like being around super creative people. Mm. Uh, I come from a family of artists. Uh, Mm. All my kids can draw really well. My parents were artists. My brother's a great artist. Really? And so I love design. I love uh, architecture. I love beauty. I love mm. to, I've remodeled one home four times. Have you really? Uh, we were growing as a company mm. uh, uh, in a lot of ways. And so um, I have to balance um, Joe Dispenza and his personal life yeah. with managing a, a, a big uh, team of people. Sure. Uh, and uh, running that. events and then being able to walk on stage and, and for a week uh, to connect with people and to advance their And I understand the kind of energy that takes too. Yeah, You've got to be so, in the right state and the yeah, right energy. Yeah, so I think, it's, I think it's not about reacting. I mean, I think mm -hmm. everybody reacts. I, it's how long you react. I think mm. that's the key. And um, so I, I, I do my best, Ed, to not see the challenges in my life I don't take them personally, because I know that most people are running a program anyway. I, I always mm. see that as what the challenge brings and how I react emotionally so then I can take care of that, I love that in my inner work. So then when I'm no longer reacting to the problem, then I'm no longer giving my power to it. So, so for me personally, um, I'm initiated. I call mm. it an initiation. Love it. Uh, but I, don't, I do my best to not be a victim around mm. it. I do my best uh, to really meet it from a greater level of mind. And certainly, somebody has faced a similar problem as me. <laughs> right. And if I look long enough, I'm going to find the answer. And then, yeah. and then taking that knowledge and information and applying mm. it and personalizing and demonstrating it 
you have to modify your behaviors in some way and when you do you have the experience and the experience mm. produces the emotion you begin to embody the truth of that philosophy and mm. now you're wearing it right and yes. so reproducing it enough times allows you to begin to master the philosophy so I have a think tank of people that uh, are just not part of my company or my organization uh, that are friends that would be mm. like you that we mm. sit around and have a glass of wine we mm. just cook together and we say okay let's unravel this thought and let's see how far we can go so I, I do enjoy uh, doing that with with unlimited minds